Okay, so a new 20 mark essay question today. So this is the topic we're looking at today is a slightly different one. It's um, discuss the factors that determine a firm's average cost of production in both the short run and the long run. So this is a pretty brutal essay. Uh, obviously you do get the choice of which essay to do in the, in the real exam, but even so, you know, you don't want to cut off your options. So I do want to take a look at this. And it, it, even though it is quite a difficult one, it's still, it's quite nice because obviously the uh, answer for this one is very standard, it's very set. There's not much range you can give on this answer. So as long as you've understood the um, the uh, the mechanism really well, you shouldn't really have any issues. Okay, so for this one, I have just written it out because you know there's not you can't get too imaginative with the structure here. It's going to be, you know, first half is discussing the short run cost curve, and then the second half is discover discussing the long run cost curve. Okay, so introduction first. Um, obviously, again, we're just going to take and define anything which is vague. So um, average costs, obviously, because that's the main point. And then, of course, the short run and the long run. If you're not very confident on what the difference between short run and long run is, that is going to be a major issue for A2 Econ. So, so just take the time to just sit and really understand what the difference is. So I've briefly um, defined it here. So, uh, um, you know, the short run is when there is at least one fixed factor of production from land, labor, capital. In the long run, all factors of production are variable. So that should be fairly standard. Now, short run, what determines the shape of cost curves in the short run? I think the short run is a lot more difficult to describe than the long run. The long run is, um, you know, it's very kind of economies and diseconomies of scale, which is um, fairly easy to, to explain. Now the short run, there's so many different parts to it. So I wanna take you through it. So first things first is understanding that in the short run, we do have fixed costs and variable costs. So, um, and both of those curves are going to behave quite differently. And that's what's going to determine the shape of our cost curves. So um, obviously fixed costs, they don't change even if we produce, let's say in a sandwich shop, 100 sandwiches or two sandwiches, it's not gonna change. Whereas the variable costs, they will increase um, by some amount um, as you increase output. So um, in general, we, um, can say that for fixed costs, fairly simply, fixed costs, when we spread it out over a greater number of units, you're essentially dividing one number by more and more and more and more. So as you can expect, fixed costs, average fixed costs is simply gonna fall very quickly at first and then get lower, 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 which is pretty um, self-explanatory. So there's nothing complicated there, okay? But that is going to explain why <clears throat> maybe our average cost might fall in the beginning. So then what is causing the rest of the curve? Okay, so this is where we get into the law of diminishing marginal returns. Now this is this is really the key point, okay? So you essentially just want to spend your time, first of all, outlining that average cost is made up of two types of costs, then explaining how fixed costs will change, and then you're straight into law of diminishing marginal returns, and you just have to explain that really well. So, um, the, when the law of diminishing marginal return sets in, ad adding additional units of input, i.e. labor or capital, causes marginal product to fall. Okay, so marginal product is how much an additional unit of capital or labor adds to total output. So that's how much they're producing. Um, and that's important because the marginal product curve and the marginal cost curve, they are the inverse of each other. Yeah, so if marginal product is increasing, marginal cost is falling. If marginal product is falling, marginal cost is uh, increasing. So because they're the inverse, we have to start with marginal product and then its effect on marginal cost. And that will in turn affect average cost. Okay. So um, let's take you through it. So the reason that as we add additional units of input, marginal product falls is simply because of the fixed factor of production. This is what is so special about the short run. Because we are limited in something. So in this example, I have um, I've, I've looked at, if we go down a little bit, I have uh, explained using the sandwich shop. So um, I've said, when we have uh, something limited, so in this case, we're using the example of um, land. So we're saying basically um, that a sandwich shop is limited in space, um, so land is limited. After a certain point, we can hire more and more employees. And what we would expect is that as we hire more employees, we should obviously produce more output because um, each employee is producing a sandwich or taking orders or either way, output of sandwiches is increasing. However, once we reach a point where we simply can't fit in more employees or it's basically becoming uncomfortable or overcrowded, then the current working employees 
are going to be less productive because they're bothered and you know uncomfortable so they're going to produce less and then the additional employer as well he's also going to produce less and so overall that additional employee he has uh, he ha he is producing some sandwiches but definitely fewer sandwiches per person than they were making before he joined okay so to to, to clear that up once again the they the additional employee hired the input that we are increasing input in terms of the employee we've added he is adding to total output of sandwiches because he is producing sandwiches but he is definitely not producing as many as the previous guy was okay the previous one we added he produced more than this guy and that's because we're limited in space everybody's feeling annoyed and so we can't produce as much in such an environment so therefore the marginal product the product, so the output added by the next additional employee is less, and so the marginal cost inverse, so it's gonna increase, okay? So uh, that's what the law of diminishing marginal returns uh, is, and so I've just summarized it here in the writing. This is because there is a fixed factor of production, and so when nearing capacity, additional units of input do not add as much product, and all other labor and capital become less productive. This fall in marginal product is reflected in an increase in marginal cost as the two functions are the inverse of each other. So explain at first always, state what it is. So in this case, stated the law of diminishing marginal returns, then explained the diminishing marginal returns, and then given an example, a contextualized example, even though the question didn't explicitly ask for one. That really gives you three layers of protection because the first is you've identified, so the examiner is going to know you know what you're talking about, the explanation so that you are getting those mechanism marks, but just in case you've explained it poorly or you've missed out something, that example will come and kind of clean up the rest. So it's really important you do it in that order. Identify, explain, example. Um, in the example, you can see, even though it is an example, I've still used the same kind of technical language like less productive, uh, total output, marginal cost. I've used technical language in the context of my example, which is going to really strengthen that for me. Okay. And so average variable cost will begin to rise as average uh, total cost is the aggregate of variable cost and fixed cost. Shape of the average total cost will be also be determined by the marginal cost curve. So. Um, um, if you look here, the language again used, I want you to take a really good look at the connectives used here. So it's all um, uh, things like uh, this is because, this fall is reflected, you know, things like so, things like hence, you know, all of these words, these connectives are super, super important with this kind of essay in particular, which can otherwise get very kind of wordy, very, very kind of difficult to follow along. Just overuse connectives. I really don't think you can have too many in a 20 mark essay. Just helps the examiner go tick, tick, tick. Okay, here's the analysis, really understanding what's going on here. So um, I really should have put this bit first, actually. So I've just put the another explanation of marginal cost and how it links to average cost. So when the marginal cost is below average cost, average cost of course will be pulled down and then when marginal cost is above average cost average cost will be pulled up now you don't need to put more than that in an essay in a 20 mark but just to make it really clear for you we're just basically saying the next person to enter the room they are going to uh, if they're less than the average um, we always use height generally to explain this kind of thing in econ so if the average height in the room was um, five foot and then the next person to enter is five foot one then we're going to the average has gone up a tiny little bit um, and if it if the next person to walk in is four foot nine it's going to pull it down so it's all about where is marginal cost in relation to average cost and that will determine whether average cost is pulled up or down Hence, AC equals MC, that point will be the lowest point of AC. And that is the point of productive efficiency. It's productively efficient. Hopefully you remember that from um, uh, looking at efficiencies. And it is the lowest possible average cost the firm can produce at, okay? Um, if you look at the average variable cost on the diagram, it's going to be just below average cost, and then the gap between them is average fixed cost. So what you should find is that the average fixed cost, the gap between the two actually gets smaller and smaller and smaller as you increase in output, because average fixed cost is falling, 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 falling as you increase output. So if you want to be really precise, you should draw the two curves tending towards each other to be 
to be honest. Okay, so here's my evaluation. You can recognize its evaluation by however. So the shape of the ABC and AC does not need to, should be do not, sorry, uh, do not need to slope downwards and then upwards if there are constant variable costs so that there are no d diminishing marginal returns. Yeah, it makes sense, right? If there's no diminishing marginal returns, then we won't, we won't have, um, we won't have average cost increase in the end. If it's constant or if it's falling variable cost, then it will be reflected in the shape of the average cost curve as well. I don't know when that would be, but you know, it could be okay. So that's the short run. Um, hopefully that all makes sense. I will include some diagrams again, somewhere linked or whatever. Okay, long run, much, much easier. So in the long run, the shape of the average cost curve is determined by economies and diseconomies of scale. Um, I've put some definitions in here. So make sure again, that you're really confident about linking um, these definitions into your writing. Now you'll notice I've put increasing returns of scale here. So as soon as you talk about economies, you must mention uh, increasing returns of scale. So that is when input increasing in one unit of input results in a proportionately larger increase in output. Again, the uh, long run average cost curve I'll put in somewhere, but between Q1 and Q2, the economies of scale outweigh the diseconomies. Remember, they always both exist. It's just which one is outweighing the other. But anyway, between those two, uh, when there's economies of scale outweighing, LROC will be pulled down. Um, and then uh, it's really important as well that you make sure, even if they haven't asked you for a specific context, they haven't told you the firm, you do have to exemplify it in some way. So here I've just said, uh, stated what types of economies of scale there are. And then I've just given a brief example of one in the form of um, purchasing economies of scale. So that's as a firm produces more output, it can negotiate cheaper prices for its materials because it's purchasing a larger volume. Now, diseconomies of scale, again, lists them out and then uh, give another example. So here I've said, uh, as a firm grows, it can be difficult to coordinate different departments, um, leading to time wasting and increase in error rate, thus increasing average cost. So anything simple like that is absolutely fine. Okay, so here's the evaluation for long run cost curves, okay? So the things that you want to discuss are the MES, so the minimum efficient scale, which is the range of outputs. Remember, it's not technically just one, single point. It's a range of outputs where there are constant returns to scale and it's essentially the lowest cost that a firm can um, produce at. And um, so it also tells you how many firms can fit in the industry. So all you have to really be able to say is high MES means few firms can fit. So it's more likely to be a monopoly or an oligopoly. Low MES means many firms can fit. So it's going to be perfectly competitive or monopolistic. So um, what can affect the MES? Well, it's gonna be the fixed cost. So I think this is a really great example for, you should always talk about this in a cost curve essay. So for a natural monopoly, hopefully you remember that a natural monopoly has very, very high fixed costs. And so the LRAC, rather than looking like a U, is actually gonna be L-shaped. And so it will slope down and then keep going down, 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 down. The reason for that is it will take a very long time for diseconomies of scale to be felt, okay? So um, when you have uh, something like a pharmaceutical company, again, you can see I've exemplified using an example. That was repetitive, but anyway. Pharmaceutical companies, the reason their fixed costs, what are the fixed costs that increase, do not increase with output? They always exist, even if they don't sell a single drug. That's gonna be the research and development. So pharmaceutical companies, the reason that they need to make such high levels of profits is because they have such high fixed costs in research because they could you know, research a drug for decades and not come up with the answer or a you know, commercially viable solution. So then you know, what can they do? So for these kinds of companies, then spreading out, selling more and more and more drugs is kind of the only way that they can spread out these huge fixed costs. And as a result, it's gonna take a really long time before the diseconomies outweigh the economies of scale. And it's also one of the reasons why the government, you know, will um, grant patents to pharmaceutical companies. Because you would think, you know, surely everyone deserves the drug, you know, of course, if it's something that's supposed to help you, why do they monetize it in this way? Well, you know, I, I definitely agree that that shouldn't be the case. But in the private market, when it is privately funded and provided, there's not really any choice because otherwise, um, you know, firms don't have an incentive to research in the first place. But even, even with that, a lot of firms just don't bother researching anything which they think won't make those um, 
dollars back, which is why often you do need a quite large number of patients suffering from the issue before they'll put any meaningful research into it, unless there's you know a special foundation or something. But anyway, so um, that can be a big, big issue. So in these types of markets, the MES will be super high. That's just something to mention. Um, finally, LRAC, so uh, with the external economies of scale. So external economies of scale, of course, something like infrastructure, you know, for communications, transportation, whatever, that will shift the LRAC up and down. Just a nice little additional point to mention. Um, you have to put some form of a conclusion, but, you know, the question is not very clear in this one. So depending on what the question is, try and make sure you've answered it. But obviously in this case, it just said, what factors determine the firm's average cost of production. So I, there's not really an answer to that. So I've just said, you know, the shape of the average cost curve in the short run and long run will depend on the industry, which it does. Um, this is quite an old 20 mark question. So I would hope that if you got something like this in an exam these days, you would definitely have some sort of context. It would be like, you know, Merck has, uh, I don't know, super high fixed costs of whatever. Um, what will determine the shape of the cost curve here, in which case you would apply it specifically to the pharmaceutical industry and you'd have a lot to contextualize there. Um, or it would specifically ask for a diagram, or it would be a kind of more of a yes, it is because of this, no, it's not because of this kind of question. But either way, the content's the same. It's just how you organize it and what context you should be using. But I know that this kind of question looks intimidating, but it's actually really, really nice because, you know, it's not too, not too tricky. It's just more the order. OK, so to keep yourself on track, remember short run first, long run next. And then inside, just make sure you've put definitions of everything. You can't mention something like, you know, um, variable cost and not have a definition in there. All of these kind of explaining essays should always, always, always have a definition. And then it's just about linking. OK. And and uh, consistent use of examples. Okay, I hope that was clear, but uh, yeah, so just if you're, if you're the, the, the key thing to get across is diminishing, uh, law of diminishing marginal returns. That's so important, you know, it just comes up again and again and again. So if you are still struggling to learn it, I would suggest just kind of memorizing at least the order of steps and then it will click at some point or another, I'm sure. Okay, cool.